Has anybody ever had a hard time dealing with their past? You know why? Because you don't believe it's been dealt with already. Do you know that any time you revisit your past apart from the blood of Jesus, you're asking a spirit of offense to come into your life and bear dead fruit in your present reality? Any time you revisit who you were instead of focusing on who you are, you're asking something that doesn't exist to now re-exist and you're giving the, the devil an open opportunity to destroy you through lies. Oh, dude, this is going to be so good. It is. It's amazing. I'm free from me. This is like, is, is revolutionary. Redemption doesn't just mean that I've been purchased. It would be good and that would be partially right. But redemption means that I've been brought back to the original value that God created me to be in the beginning as if I never ate the tree. The difference between Adam then and me now is the second Adam came to not just put God with me, but to put God in me. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Do you know that when you look introspective and try to fix you, it never works out? <laughs> All right, count number one. Who here has looked inside and tried to fix what's wrong and, and made out well with that? Come on, but how many times have we wanted an answer because the voices won't stop? Guess what? The voices never stop. Jesus said, my sheep hear and obey my voice, and as strangers they will not follow. In order to follow a voice, you'd have to hear it because it's a voice. Okay, so Satan never shuts up. He keeps on talking. The way to silence him is that you put truth here so that the lie is so exposed it has no access to your soul. And then when the voice comes, it's so exposed by truth. Why would I want that when I have this? What if God's already said yes to me and I've already said yes to God, why would I say yes to the devil? Come on, he's a liar. He's trying to make you depressed, angry, bitter, in unforgiveness. He's trying to make you just like him. He's trying to reproduce himself in you. Are you okay? How many of you would like to be done, finished, dealing with who you were? Okay, good. Then this will be a great message for you. Because guess what the finished work does? It finishes it. Why did Jesus say it's finished? Notice how he didn't say to be continued. What does finish really mean? What does finished really mean? It means finished. It really means done, like kaput, like no more. That's the end. That's it. Finished. Done. Did he deal with it or not? I mean, how much sin does the blood of Jesus cover? Some or all. So what's the problem? I think we're listening to the liar. That's what I think. You want to hear a real quick testimony about this voice thing? Is that all right? Okay. Gosh. Well, first of all, I've seen so many people get free, but I want to tell you a, a testimony about, uh, remember I told you my last job, I was an ice delivery guy, and I delivered ice, and then actually, I heard in my heart that I'm going to put a two-week notice in on my job, and the reason why I was putting that two weeks notice in is that I had went, and a year before that, a year and a half before that, I had applied, or I had went and taken my real estate exam, okay? Problem. With the real estate exam, I passed it, but then you have to fill out the application to get your license. And then you have to put the truth down about your life that you lived. Well, there's that felony question again. All right, so I loaded it up and gave him all the truth, the whole truth, so help me God, right? So it got to the real estate board, and the real estate board denied me and said, absolutely not. If you want to appeal it, you can appeal it, but there's no way that we're giving you a license. So I'm like, that ain't right. I'm going to appeal this thing. So I go up there to the state building, to the real estate enforcement committee, 
to where I'm going to get questioned in front of them. Well, I've got good things to say. So I go up there and there's five of these people sitting around this table like with their hands like this, kind of look like, you know, it's like a court hearing. So I went up there and I said, how you guys doing? My name's Todd. So pleased to meet you. Bless you. And I shook all their hands. And I, wanted, I said, I just want to tell you guys that Jesus thinks you all are amazing. And they're like, okay. All right. Well, thank you, Brister White. We appreciate this. Thank you. And they said, you know, uh, we see that you have all this record. See, the truth is, is that the last time that I was arrested was like back in 90, 91. So that was a long time ago. See, I just didn't get caught after that. So I went, you know, through Teen Challenge and everything, and I put that on the app, but I didn't put the dates down because I didn't ask for the dates. So I get in front of the real estate committee, and they were going to give me my license. Once I told them about, oh, we're, so what you're saying is that you've been drug-free since 1991. Oh, no. I said, no, not at all. Matter of fact, it got way worse than that, and I just amplified the truth. <laughs> really? So the real estate committee is like, are you kidding me? My wife's watching because we laugh about this because it's the truth. Now we laugh about it. We didn't laugh about it then. Because I'm just pretty bold with just the gospel, man. See, I'm not ashamed of it. Oh, man, it's so good. I See, I'm free. I'm clean. Do you know what it's like to be just squeaky clean? There's nothing in me. There's no darkness in me. There's no shadow in me. There's no hidden secrets. I don't have any junk or any closets. I don't have anything hidden. I'm very transparent. I'm open about everything. And I don't like, I don't hide anything so that you guys might find out. And then when you do, you'll find out with a real Todd White. Please step forward. That's twisted. Dude, your stuff will find you out. Come on, man. Don't be like the devil. He's a liar. Don't be one. You okay? Come on, man. Let's be real with this thing. So, I'm sitting there talking to them, and they're just like, their mouths are open, like, listening to me. And I'm pouring out my heart. Yeah, oh gosh, but you're looking at a brand new creation right now. I'm a brand new man. Well, okay. Uh, you know, so they're trying to tell me, all right, well, that's great. Mr. White, it's not all about Jesus. And I'm like, no, but you don't understand. It is all about Jesus. And I'm like, whoo, wow, whoo. not looking good for me getting the job, right? They're like, all right, we'll let you know our decision. So they sent me a decision in the mail two weeks later, denied. They denied my appeal. And they said, if you would like to appeal what it can, you can, but you have to go to see a psychologist. <laughs> serious. And I have this thing about psychology. I believe that Christianity is not psychological, it's supernatural. I believe that my Bible says in Colossians 2, let no one deceive you with empty deceit or philosophy or something that sounds really good. The gospel's true, but there's a lot of stuff out there that tries to take you away from the very truth. I believe that there's a large portion of the body of Christ that hasn't wrapped faith around the cross. That haven't wrapped faith around the cross. And if you don't wrap faith around the cross, you have nothing. You'll build and build and build, and someday you'll have to go back to the very foundational principle of righteousness in order to be okay. But that's where we're supposed to stay and start and stay. Stay and start in righteousness. We're not supposed to go away from that. That's where we're supposed to stay. If we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and we don't understand what it is, then we don't understand who we are. I believe in the gospel there's not 12 steps, there's only one. It's a lot easier, think about it, one, 12. I'm sticking with this one. <laughs> Serious. In the one step is, right, is righteousness, is redemption, is complete freedom. Like, I mean, how clean does the blood of Jesus make me? Does it make me have to go through 12 steps to stay clean for life? Or do I have to just stay in that one step and be clean forever? Did he obtain something eternally or do I have to keep on attaining it? You know what eternal redemption really means? I'm eternally redeemed. God's never going to change his mind. A thousand years from now, he's not going to say, well, you know what? I really made a mistake with that Todd guy. He's never going to change his mind. He's always the same. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He's profusely in love with me. He's not mad at me. And he really, really, really wants me to make it. 
So he set up the Bible for me to understand it with my heart, that the eyes of my heart will be open, that I might get the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that I might know his will. It says to know his will everywhere you look at in the New Testament. It says that you might know the will of God, that you might know it. Don't be unwise, but know the will of the Lord. And we want to hand it around like a hot potato. Well, you know, I can't know the will. No, it says don't be unwise. Are you unwise? If you're unwise, you'll never try to understand the will of the, God, of the, will of the Lord. The mystery has been revealed, guys. Prophets and, and people in the Old Testament wanted to see it, and they saw it, but they couldn't have it. So they did see it, but they couldn't have it. Now we have it and don't even realize what we really have. So we walk around spinning in circles trying to find out our identity and get wrecked by hell and not know who we are. And if we don't know who we are, how's the world ever going to know who we are? Why would the world want what we, what we have if we're confused about who we really are? Dude, it's not confusing. Jesus Christ paid a price to set you free from you so that he could live in you. He could repossess that which was lost. You could destroy hell for a living and one day get to heaven. But first heaven gets into you as you live as an ambassador with heaven flowing through you, stomping hell, living with the ministry of righteousness, the ministry of reconciliation, not imputing the world's sins against them. So one day I wake up for work and God speaks to me in the morning and he says, you're going to see a psychologist. And I'm like, oh no, I'm not. <laughs> I thought it was me. You know what I mean? Like you ever think like when God speaks to you, that's just me. But I knew I didn't want to do that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to a psychologist. All right. So I want you to call today. I'm like, Arr. okay. I listened. <laughs> so I called. I said, yeah, my name's Todd White, and I need to set up an appointment. I called during my, during my day. I said, oh, well, we just happen to have an appointment for you if you want to come in later on. I'm like, <laughs> So I go to the psychologist's office, and I come into the, to the front door, and I go up to the lady at the desk, and I said, hi, my name's Todd. How are you? Oh, yes, Mr. White. Yes, uh, so-and-so is Dr. So-and-so. I don't remember his name, but I was going to see him. And I said to her, I said, ma'am, I said, you have a real problem in your, in your back, right on the, this side. She goes, actually, yes, I do. I said, can I see your hand, please? And I reached across the counter and prayed for her. She said, oh, my gosh, what did you do? I said, I just prayed for you in Jesus' name, but I really appreciate your time. My name's Todd. See, Jesus paid, I, I preach the kingdom. See, Jesus paid more of a price than just to get you to heaven. I said, are you a Christian? She said, well, yeah. Well, he didn't just pay a price for you to get to heaven, or when you would have asked him to come into your life, you'd have disappeared. But he left you here. He left you here so that you could have him flowing through you all day long and that you could destroy hell in people's lives every day. She's like thinking, he, he's at the right place. <laughs> Think with me. If you're not used to this, I'm crazy. Even if you are, I still am. <laughs> the problem is, is I'm not really out of my mind. I'm just out of yours. Serious. Think about that. You're not supposed to be in your own mind. Matter of fact, it says to have your mind set on things above and not on things of this world. That's really powerful. If you set your mind on things above, what's available? Everything, baby. Why? Because Jesus relied fully and completely upon the treasure house of resources that God had for him. And that same treasure house is mine. And it's not to further my kingdom, it's to further his. And anything and everything that Jesus completely relied upon in all of his life is at my disposal to further his kingdom. Everything. And I just happen to know it, and I'm really thankful for, do, for having to know it. And gosh, they, I cry all the time. Why? How good is this, man? This is crazy. Like, it's not so. God said, you know what? Boy, he's a mess. I'm going to give him everything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> what do I do? Just be. Okay. Thanks, God. It's really how I live my life. I just say yes. God says you're a son. I say yes. He says you're forgiven. I say yes. The devil says you're not. I say 
Come on, man. So I go back to see the psychologist. He brings me in, and we start our questioning. And he does the, hi, Mr. White, how are you? I'm like, I'm doing so good. Like, you explain to me exactly why you're here? And he had the thing in front of him, so he probably knew. And I said, well, I guess up there at the real estate enforcement committee, I made a good impression on him. Because I'm here in front of you, and I'm supposed to explain to you the same good impression. So here it goes. So I just gave him the gospel. He goes, well, I'm a Christian. I said, awesome, man. Good. So good. I'm so thankful that you are. And they just didn't understand. And I'm like, Jesus, wow, redeem. And I'm hammering the gospel, man. Loving it. Just preaching the kingdom. Well, he's not a kingdom guy. At all. But he's a nice guy. He's awesome. So I'm like, and he's not my enemy. You know what I mean? He's not my war. My war is not against people. If somebody doesn't believe, they're not my enemy. What's in and upon them is. My war is not against people. It's not against flesh and blood. It's really powerful, man. If we get this, you won't have issues anymore. You know what people say when I say that about issues? They say, well, you don't know my life. I say, no, you don't know what he went through for you. You can amplify your problems as much as you want, but you have no idea what he went through or your problems wouldn't be what they are. Why would I sit there and pity you when Jesus is amazing and he paid a price for you to believe the gospel? And if we don't believe, there's no way for us to rest. And if you don't rest, there's no way for you to live. You'll live your whole life in anxiety. You'll worry about everything. You'll spend your whole life in worry. You'll be freaked out by everything. You'll, you'll walk in fear. You'll, you'll, you'll act just like the devil. Do you know that any day... Do you think that he's afraid? Do you understand that he walks around in fear every day? Every day. You know he prowls around like a roaring lion, right? Right? looking to see whom he might destroy. It says that, right? Do you believe that's in scripture? Because it is, it's in there. Do you know that when you find out who you are, he has to prowl somewhere else? Come on, man. What, did Jesus know who he was? He had to look somewhere else. Satan had to look somewhere else, man. It wasn't like he was coming up to, to Jesus and... <sighs> Think with me. Your identity is everything, guys. So I'm sitting there talking to this guy, and he's like, we get a little further, and I said, hey, man, I got a question for you. He goes, what's that? I said, can I ask a question now? He goes, yeah. I said, do you believe the gospel? Well, sure I do. How much of it do you believe? Well, I've gone to church my whole life. I said, awesome. I said, you've got two herniated discs, sciatic nerve damage going down your right leg right now. And it's constant pain. So I guess you're saying that you think that if you pray for me, it will go away. I say, I told you, you should let me. No, thank you. That's what he said, no, thank you. I said, well, that's crazy. You won't let me. You know what he said? You know what the next question out of his mouth was? Uh, Mr. White, do you hear voices? <laughs> you know my response? You're going to love this. You know what my response was? Absolutely, yes, I do. And he sat back in his chair and he, okay. Now we're getting the whole game thing on, right? He's getting ready to analyze me. And I said, you told me you believe the gospel. Yes, I do. It's okay. Does Jesus say that my sheep hear and obey my voice? Yes, he does. Does he say hear? Well, yes, but that means reading. Does faith come by reading? I'm just not debating. I'm asking questions because I need to ask questions here. Okay, he did. Now it's my turn. And I'm not being smart or mean or anything. I'm just trying to ask questions, okay? Does faith come by reading or faith come by hearing? 
It says faith comes by hearing. So what are we talking about here? Well, you asked me if I heard voices. I said yes. I said, I do hear voices. I said, you hear voices too. I said, the ones that Satan brings because the stranger comes and he brings his voice and Jesus commanded us that as strangers we will not follow. My sheep hear and obey my voice and as strangers they will not follow. It's a commandment to not follow it. They will not. He said, I will not follow it. To will not follow means that I have to hear it. The difference between when somebody hears the stranger's voice and God's voice is if they follow the stranger's voice, they're led into deception, they're led into lies, and those people are a lot of your patients. He said, you know, I, I understand. And I said, listen, my whole life, and I told him my testimony. I listened to the stranger's voice my whole life, man. People are probably dead because of me. It's my whole life. I deceived and lied to people. That girl that's watching right now, I... I destroyed her life for nine years. I destroyed my daughter's life for seven and a half years. And Jesus set me free. I told him about the voice that I heard getting shot at that day. Getting shot at from 10 feet away. God said, I took those bullets for you. Are you ready to live for me yet? And I refuse to live for me because I said yes. Yeah, I hear voices. He says, okay, Mr. White, I think we're about done. <laughs> Serious. Promise. Honest. So I walked out in the parking lot, and I saw a lady in the parking lot getting into her car, or getting out of her car. And I said, hey, ma'am. She goes, yes. She's on her way into the office, the psychologist's office. I said, I just want to tell you, do you, do you know how much Jesus loves you? You're amazing. Thank you. <laughs> she walked into the office. She's, right? So I didn't get a response back from the Real Estate Enforcement Committee. They didn't give me a response back. <clears throat> About a week later, the psychologist called me. He said, Mr. White. I said, yeah, how you doing, man? I was wondering what's going on with that decision. And he couldn't tell me anything about the decision. He goes, when you were in our office, did you pray for somebody here? I said, I sure did. You should let me pray for you. Did you ask her about her back? Actually, she says that her back does feel better. I said, are you ready to let me pray for yours now? Because I really want to. He's like, no, I'm okay. He goes, did you also talk to another lady in the parking lot? I said, I sure did. He goes, you know that not everybody's comfortable with you sharing about Jesus. And I said, yeah? And he said, I, I need you to understand something. You're at a public office and you have to respect people. I said, you're a Christian, right? I said, let me tell you something, man. Just... I told you that I surrendered and I laid by, down my life. I won't have people's blood on my hands. I'm going to share with all my heart every day because I don't live for me anymore. I live for the king. You said that you're a Christian and it means a lot to me. It's time that the ugly part of the body of Christ gets removed so that we can actually be true to our calling. Our calling is to be a believer. And as a believer, I'm called to preach the good news to all creation. And all I did was tell her that Jesus loves her. I won't apologize for that. And he was silent. Didn't say anything. And I said to him, I love you, man. I'm not being mean. And I'm crying on the phone. I could cry right now because there's so many people that think that way. You know, you're a teacher and you're at school and an elementary school teacher. And you're working at school and you think, you know, your hands are tied that you can't. Man, the Bible says that you pray and lay your hands on the sick. And the sick recover. It, or it says, these signs will follow them that believe. They will lay their hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. What does that mean? That means that I could be walking by a student in school without a spoken word and say, hey, I just want to tell you, you're doing a great job today. And because of the presence of God and the reality of Jesus in your life, God flows through you and heals that kid. Think with me, guys. You're not limited to anything. I don't care. It doesn't matter where you work at. Are you sold out or are you sold to the world? Who are you purchased by? Are you redeemed by blood or do you still live and love the world? I'm not saying don't enjoy the world, but I'm saying enjoy God more. Come on, man. It says that if you're a friend of the world, you're not a friend of God, and I'd much rather be a friend of God. 
God doesn't mind you having stuff, but he really, really, really is not okay with stuff having you. He's a jealous God. He's not going to share you with anything. He wants everything that you are so that he can stop hell through you every day. God's not, he wants to bless you. There's so many people that are seeking blessing instead of God. We're seeking to be blessed. Bless me, God. Bless me, God. Bless me, God. God will bless the world before he blesses the selfish church.